have you had enough? Have you? Have you had enough of your boss humiliating you and blaming you for things in front of other people because they don't have what it takes to take the blame for themselves when they make mistakes? Have you had enough of your coworkers treating you as though they are your boss? Have you had enough of people ignoring you when you give solutions to problems and then somebody else says the same thing and they're hailed as the master of the universe and the savior of the company when you just said that five minutes ago? Have you had enough of people asking you for your opinion and then once you give it, you're labeled as negative and critical? Have you had enough? I mean, really. Communication skills training, basically, is going to be made up of three different things, principles, tactics, tools. Most often, the training that I see and probably you have seen in the past is going to be very heavy on theory. They think it's principles, but it's really theory. Tactics are kind of in the middle. And then the tools that help you really implement these things are going to be the smallest part of that training. They have it backwards. And when you have it backwards, you can't move past that. When you have it backwards, like we should be sitting learning theory all day and then we get a couple of tools to help us implement that, you're not going to get any change in your life. The way I teach, the tactics is really the gist of it, but the tools, if you don't have the right tools, how are you going to take the information that you gather when it comes to language and implement it without the right tools? It's like if you wanted to learn Chinese. So you read a book on Chinese and then you went to China and thought you could speak it. You're going to be sorrily disappointed. You're going to feel like it was a waste of time and you're probably going to be discouraged from ever trying it again because you got no results. Well, that's because you didn't have the right framework. I mean, you can't just read a book on Chinese and then go to China and speak it. But that's what so many people think that they can do. They read a book on crucial conversations, or they read a book on leadership, or they go to a seminar on critical thinking or powerful communication skills. And then when they figured out how to take what they learned and fit it into their life, which you should not have to do, that was difficult to do because when the moment presented itself, they were without words. It's difficult to find the right words in the moment because of the nature of communication. And they couldn't speak Chinese after having been through that Chinese seminar two months ago. Surprise, surprise, you know? I'm going to make it so easy for you. But you have to know what the three biggest mistakes are that people generally make when trying to make this change, when trying to transform the way the world perceives you and the impression that you are making on the world through your words. You have to know what the biggest mistakes that people make are so that you can avoid them. And you have to know what the secrets are, the things that people do that get results so that you can do that instead. So I'm going to tell you what those things are today. Simple. I'm going to give you the three-step framework. Now, I'll tell you, you're in the right place if you woke up in that zombie land. You're in the right place if you feel as though you're on your own and you have no support and you are totally unequipped to deal with this bizarre land in which you find yourself. You are in the right place if you feel like you're at the end of your rope and that this might be a lost cause. It's not. You feel as if you have no options and your mental health and physical health are suffering. For example, if you right now are on medication, if you're watching this at home because you're on medical leave, because you are physically paying a price for what's going on, that's not okay. That is not okay. And you're in the right place because we can make this stop starting today. If you have been to other communication skills training, such as the type that I've described, where you sit through a lot of theory, you want to rip your face off and throw it at the instructor because you had to witness this drivel. You want to rip your ears off and stomp them on the floor because you were forced to listen to this garbage. If you're sick of other communication training and you've gotten nothing from it, because it seems to be made for people who live in fantasy land and don't have real problems, you're in the right place. But you are not in the right place. This is not for you. If you are uninclusive and you believe that really the problem with everything today could be solved, if we could just get back to the good old days of oppressing people and marginalizing them, if you believe that, this is not going to be the place for you. You just won't get anything out of it. We don't share the same beliefs. You will not be, you will not dig what I'm putting out there today. Uh, you also are not in the right place if you think that it's okay to sometimes speak words filled with lovelessness because some people just don't deserve to be treated with the same dignity and respect as others. I mean, come on, they don't deserve that. You know, by nature of people being here, they don't deserve to be loved or respected or they don't have dignity. Not everybody has the same amount anyway. If you believe that, you're in the wrong place. Just letting you know. You're not, you might as well quit now. I don't want to waste your time. So there you go. You are also not in the right place if, I don't sell during this course, but I believe in a quid pro quo universe. I do. So the deal is 
When I'm done giving this course, I am going to tell you if you want more, where to get it from me. And I'll give you a special discount and action taker bonuses at the end of this course that I don't give anyplace else. If I have done my job and you're interested in learning more, you'll want to hear that. If I do not do my job, you won't be interested in hearing anymore and you won't want to do that. But you don't have to decide that until the end. I think that's a pretty fair trade-off. Wouldn't you agree with that? All right. So if we're all in agreement as to who should be here and who should not be here, let's get a move on. When I first started teaching 30 years ago, what I was teaching really was technical analysis of the stock market because when I left school so early, I did a lot of different things. A lot. Looking back at it now, as most of us do, I see the pattern and where it was all leading towards. And at the time I was teaching technical analysis of the stock market and I was an investment banker and I worked in the stock market and I learned a lot of things about, you know, the, the basic give and take, the, the return on investment. If you do not get a return on your investment, whatever that investment is, that investment could be your time, your emotion, your attention. If you don't get a return, you're going to get sour grapes and you're going to get frustrated and you're going to abandon whatever it is that you were investing in. And it could be that you could have gotten a great return. You just didn't make the right deal. You just didn't charge for it or you didn't know how to collect at the end and you left money on the table that was yours and you should have taken it. I don't do that. And I'm going to tell you, I think it's during the next big mistake we're going to talk about. I'm going to tell you how to specifically monetize, quantify and charge for your communication skills. But the mistake that most people make is number one. They spend way too much time in communication skills training courses. Oh my God, way too much time. Way, way too much time. Remember that the educational business is a business. And what people want you to do is spend your time with them. I mean, a university wants to charge you for as many years as they possibly can. They want to keep you in that seat for as long as possible so that they can charge you for as long as possible for being in that seat and receiving the information. Now, sometimes it's worth it, sometimes it's not, but that's the business. The business of education is generally th the longer that somebody can keep you in their seat, the better. I have a different business model. My model is what I'm giving you and what you're paying for is the information th so that you can see a change in your life. As an added bonus, I do provide people who need them badges and certificates and credits and whatever else you need. I can provide that for you. But the number one mistake that people make when they try to improve their communication skills is sitting through communication courses. Remember that this is a language issue. If you look at the triangle on where the emphasis is placed, most courses, communication training courses, personal development courses, soft skills courses, are mostly learning. And then a little bit of practice, they tell you how to do that. You know how, if you can figure out a way to apply it to your life, which is up to you, is a little bit of that involved. But that's backwards. And if you have things backwards, you're not going to get the results that you want. You should be spending most of your time practicing in just a little teeny tiny bit of time learning. Imagine again, if you're going to be learning a new language, which is what this is all about. A lesson should look like, I'm going to show you a lesson, for example, from Step Out of the Shadows and Speak. I'm going to show you this because this is how it should look. When you look through a textbook, when you look through a workbook, it should look like this. You'll see that I I divide things into sections. For example, today, let's say this is lesson one of Step Out of the Shadows and Speak. You're going to get a lesson on personal development. You're going to get a lesson on persuasion. You might get a lesson on dealing with difficult people, and you might get a principle for the week. Those are the four things you're going to learn. If you look at those and you think, you know, that's not really what I'm into this week. I don't need to learn that now. Then you can move on to the next lesson and figure out, is there something in this lesson that I can take and use today? If not, you might want to leave that lesson and go to the next one. But you should be able to skim things, find what's going to be pertinent to you, what's going to help you today, pluck that out, learn it in a few minutes, and then the magic comes when you go practice it. To practice it, however, you need the right tools. I mean, if you're learning Chinese, what you're going to want to do is learn quickly. You know, it takes a few minutes to learn how to ask, where's the bathroom? You want to learn how to ask. How much does that cost? You want to learn how to say thank you. You want to learn how to say you're welcome. You want to learn how to say where is the blah, blah, blah. Let's say that those are the first few things you're going to start out with. That takes a few minutes to 
to learn once, you know, to, to say once, to learn, okay, that's how you do it. But because of the way the brain works and how we learn things, you're going to forget that. I mean, you can't just hear something. You can't just read something. You can't just practice something once and then you've got it. That's not the way it works when it comes to language skills. Especially because, remember, there is this moment between event and response when we need our language skills the most. That's when our brain tends to fail us. And that's because we have the left-hand logical side where language lives. Remember, LLL, left-hand language logic. When that side is stimulated, it draws us out of the right-hand side where emotion lives, where big-picture thinking lives. And when one side of the brain is activated, the other side is generally deactivated. It draws us out of the other side of the brain. The energy that we're placing in one side of the brain, one hemisphere, is going to draw us out of the other side of the brain. That's why when somebody pushes our buttons and we become emotional, we forget our words. It's difficult for us to remember. By nature of us needing them, we are less likely to have access to those words. It's just a catch-22 that's very difficult to overcome for most people. Here's how you overcome it. You learn what the words are. That's the smallest part of the triangle. Then the practicing comes in where you have the right tools. You have the right visual aids. You have the right flashcards. You have the right infographics. You have the right tools so that you can practice, 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 practice. And then when the moment arises where you need those words, because you have learned it the right way and you practiced it using the right tools, you're good. The secret to learning this the right way and having access to the right words when you need them so that you can make that change so that you can choose correctly. You can only do that when you spend 80% of your time practicing and 20% of your time learning. You need the right tools. For example, one principle is people associate us with others who use the same verbal patterns as we use. If I make the mistake of using the verbal patterns that are used by people who do not get the results that I'm looking for, I'm doomed. So that's the principle. Another principle is if somebody objects to what I'm presenting, for example, if I'm in a meeting, we may think, hey, I just said that a minute ago and everybody thought I was dumb and you just said it and everybody thinks you're a genius. What's with that? Is it what you just said? I mean, we don't pay attention to those little things sometimes. We might not even know why what you are saying is getting results that I'm not getting. It's in the little things. For example, when you're presenting something, are you saying things like, oh, you know what? I have an idea. I think this is the best route that we should take. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't introduce myself. My name is Dan. And all I need you to do so that we can get this done is X, Y, Z. If you say things like that, if you say things like, I have an idea. First of all, nobody wants to hear your ideas. They don't, especially if you're here. They don't want to hear it. Number two, if you say, I think, nobody wants to hear what you think, especially if you're here. Nobody wants to hear what you think. If you say, I'm sorry, why would you want to say that? Why would you want to further diminish your power by saying, I'm sorry, like other people who have no power say? If you say, I need you to do this, why would you want to present yourself as a needy person at work when people already don't want to hear what you have to say and don't want to hear what you think and, you know, don't want to fulfill your needs? <laughs> why would you say any of those things? I have an idea. I think I'm sorry. I need it. Those are all danger phrases. You should eliminate them from your verbal repertoire at work. In addition to that, let's say that you present your idea and somebody will object to it and say, I think that, 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 that. When it comes time for me to overturn an objection, to overcome an objection, there's ways to do it that are more effective than others, right? I mean, tactical communication is about learning what the words and phrases are that are going to be statistically proven to more often than not achieve my goal, as opposed to the common things that people say that do not help them achieve their goal or the things that sabotage people from achieving their goal. When you can learn what those phrases are, that sabotage your success and replace them with ones that have been shown over and over and over again to be more likely to help you achieve your goal, it can be very simple. You just need to change your verbal patterns. The words that I'll give you, the verbal patterns that I give you are not new words or phrases or things that you are not familiar with. They're all in your verbal repertoire right now. It's just that sometimes we don't use them correctly. We don't use them strategically. Once you start doing that, it then becomes a new habit. They become your new verbal patterns. You don't have to keep learning it. You just learn it and it will be done. There will be bigger and better things I'm sure you'll want to aspire to once you're done, but we'll get to that later on. <laughs> These things are more crucial because as long as you're using the verbal patterns of people who are not respected, who are not listened to, who are not considered to be powerful, who are not considered to be capable, you will not be considered to be powerful. You will not be respected. You will not be considered to be capable. So change those verbal patterns. To do so, you need the right tactics 
and then you need the right tools to help you practice them so that you can use them, especially in those moments between event and response where the brain goes, right? Mistake number two.